Well, hello everyone, this is Peter Granich. You may or may not be seeing me. We'll find out when this comes live, but I do know you see three of our very special guests that are gonna be with me on April 6th up at Hockey Night at the Meadowlands, but we thought we have a chance to talk to them here for those that won't be able to be there and find out what they've been up to, what do they think about their teams and what do they think of the Stanley Cup. So first, let me introduce Christine. Chris, 11 years uh, with the Flyers. I believe you still hold the record for most games played by a defenseman for the Flyers. Uh, great to be here. Ron Greshner. Well, what can you say? You think of New York Rangers, all-time greats. He's always in that conversation. He's always in my all-time great conversation, friend. And then there's this guy, Grant Marshall, that somehow got two Stanley Cups, fellas. He's got two <laughs> Stanley Cup rings. I'm surprised he's not rubbing them right there as you're talking <laughs> with the Devils and, of course, the Dallas Stars. Guys, great for joining us. Chris, let's start with you. What are you up to these days? Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. I was just uh, you know, sharing it off uh, off the recording. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I do, uh, I do uh, a podcast with the Flyers in-house for game nights, and we recap road games. Uh, it's called uh, Snow the Goalie. And I joined with a former reporter and a podcast host, and it's been – it's it's to the Flyers fans. It's probably the the best listening material that they can get. So I enjoy doing that. Uh, but it's not what my life goal is. Uh, you know, after uh, hockey was over, I, I actually wrote a book a couple of years ago. Um, I had a struggle with addiction, uh, end of my career, and at, at, as my career ended, and as a result, uh, when uh, changing scene in 2020, I I uh, joined uh, a couple guys and uh, we opened up uh, recovery centers for both addiction and mental health here in the Delaware Valley, New Jersey, and in Philadelphia. And that's my job during the day. And uh, it's great to give back and uh, let people know that there's hope out there if you're struggling. And, and I want to be part of that, uh, that journey for them. So it's called Pennsylvania Recovery Center. And that's uh, my day job and flyers uh, when there's home games at night. So I got a little bit of be uh, best of both worlds right now, if you will, Peter. Well, listen, from my 20 years of a lot of guys from addiction and still so uh God bless that you got through it, and now you, your voice to know what, what to deal with. Grant Marshall, mm. two Stanley Cups, one for Dallas, but the one that people, I guess, because you're up in this area full time, we always see you. You work with the Devils. I know that. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to. Well, thanks, Peter. I'm glad that to, to be a part of this, and uh, and Chris, your story is great. You know, I've known you for a while, and. Uh, Congratulations on that on that recovery and well done with the book and the podcast. Now apparently that's that's a great that's great. Um, and Gresh, it's always great to uh, see you. You're a, you're a character and uh, a legend yep. of the sport, and uh, it's always a pleasure to be in your in your in your presence as well, um, Peter. And you know, it goes without saying how how good a person you are for all of us and a friend you are, Peter, to us. So you know, thank you for putting this on and hosting. We're looking forward to seeing you as well on the sixth. As for me. You know, I'm just, you know, giving back in a different way, working with the alumni. Um, I enjoy, you know, being part of that, being around the grassroots part of it, uh, all over the the state of New Jersey, um, sometimes uh, even into Pennsylvania, um, New York, and that. And it's just great. Um, I love the game of hockey. You know, the game of hockey has been so good to me. Um, we were all kids at one point trying to play this game and, and, and be, uh, be in the, the show, as they say. And um, anytime we can give back and doing the learn to play programs and uh, the meet and greets and talking hockey is uh, it's not hard, but it's also very, very rewarding. So I'm glad to still be a part of that. And uh, I don't plan on going anywhere uh, anytime soon um, with regards to uh, being part of the Devils organization, which they've been great to me and um, promoting the game of hockey. Rash, let me just stop by saying with no disrespect to our other two guests, one of the three best nights I ever had in my entire life for 20 years. I had a horse named after a teammate of yours named Nick Fatigue. Oh, I thought that was the one you named Pie Face. Yeah, well, that's your nickname <laughs> for him. You're the one that can say it to him. I still risk saying that to him face to face. But I shipped it to Yonkers. You two guys came up about three hours before the race. My dream was to get a photo with the horse winning. Uh, with you two, but uh, we managed still to come second. But uh, the stories you guys told and the camaraderie that you guys had, uh, I think Ranger fans would have paid much money if I taped it. I'd have to clean it up, but uh, yeah. we'd tape it. But uh, listen, I, I know you don't need accolades, but uh, 
I had two bucket lists. You know that I spoke publicly about it, that I thought in sports needed to be taken care of in the New York area. The finally one has been taken care of. Joe Klecker went into the Hall of Fame. The other one is your number should be retired by the Rangers. And I hope to be yeah, alive. Right and, here. I, I hope <laughs> you to be alive and you alive for that day to see that go up in the rafters. So, Gresh, what are you up to these days? Well, I'm um, see the father of four college kids because I started with kids late. And I didn't know how expensive they were until now. <laughs> but anyway, no, I'm not working with, I work full time with the garden. I work with, uh, I do special events, go to the games. I have the best job in the world. I mean, uh, I've been with them for 50 years working there. And I'm and I'm only 30 years old, so you figure that out. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's, it's always nice to be on with former players and guys that are, you know, if you, if you had addiction and stuff like that and you fought your way through that, hats off to that because that's, um, I have a very special friend of mine, Barry Beck, was, was fighting that, and uh, he's he's he lost his son like four years ago, I think it is now, yep. in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, I spent a lot of time talking to Barry, and you know, I, I was lucky enough. Um, I left home when I was fifteen, and that's just when pot came out. And I remember my dad saying to me, "If you ever do drugs, you'll kill your mother." And she she died at ninety nine, and that that was in my brain all the time, you know. And I I played with a lot of guys. I remember the first time I ever seen cocaine. I was on the back seat of a car driving to Long Beach, and I'm going, these guys <laughs> coke in the front seat. I'm going, I'm I'm nineteen years old in New York. I didn't know what the hell that shit was. Oh my God, up in Saskatchewan, but no, I, I I enjoy working for the Garden. I enjoy um, Dolan. Mister Dolan is so good to us. For the alumni, we have we probably we probably do alumni events between six and eight hundred a year, and guys come in, fly in from all over the place, and uh, he's he's just just amazing what they do for the for the players. And I mean, I I'm 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 I guess I'm lucky enough to be there a long time, so they kind of like they keep me around just because of my must my goatee and that. Okay. <laughs> handsome, handsome, handsome for thirty. Well, 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 no, yeah. Like. <laughs> Like it's funny. I went to a thing yesterday to sign autographs and stuff. Oh, that's my sister. Over there, but, um, I went and did, and my son came with me. He looks just like me when I was twenty-five, you know. So they're all going like, "I go, yeah, that's my son." You know? but it's like uh, it's I I've, I've been just lucky enough to be in a great organization, and 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 I'm I, I know the Flyers are are stand up one, and the Devils are really getting up there now to be a good good organization on and off the ice which is a um, plus for the past players. Mm -hmm. It's a big bonus. And I think a lot of guys need to be taken care of. A lot of guys need help. And uh, I find to put myself in that kind of position to try to help a lot of guys. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't need somebody to tell me like I did a good job, but I, I, as, I as long as I can see uh, and talk to Barry Beck and many other guys and guys are older too. You know, I mean, I'll be 70 this year and it, it's amazing how people need help, and a lot mm -hmm. of guys are too. A lot of guys are just too proud to to get the help, and that that's that's one of the downfalls where where guys are dying young and not not getting help, and they need help. and And a book like yours can help them. What yeah. you're doing, you know, it's it's it it can. It might, it might not be on a scale this big, but if it's a scale that big and it fits five people, yeah, yeah. five people yeah. a year. That, that's a that's a big that's a big victory because we we lose more than that in a year. Yeah, yeah. And, and I and I, I truly believe that the NHL could probably do more, but they're getting there, and mm -hmm. they have to, they have to help out. But as for for the Rangers and stuff, you know, everybody goes when I quit hockey, I don't want to play hockey anymore. I don't want to watch hockey. I watch more hockey now. I got more hockey packages. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Like you know, I, I've been. <laughs> For 66 years, I've been in hockey since I'm three years old. Mm -hmm. like, what, what, what else? I mean, I, I have other businesses, you know, like, and, and it's not the money part of it. It's just, I enjoy, I, I just love hockey. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I, and I and I don't wish any of your teams bad luck, but I don't want any of your teams to make the playoffs because I want it easier for us. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I get, I get it. Because <laughs> well, some games are always tough. So Marcy yeah. might be in trouble right now. 
So I let's talk. Hold on, guys. Hold on. That, I, that, was, one of my, that was one of my questions. So I'm going to go to you each, and we're going to start with the one guy's team that's out looking in at the moment, and that would be Grant Marshall and the Devils. They still, as you say, may have a mathematical chance, but uh, I guess, Grant, the fairness to say is last year maybe people got too excited on how well the team surprisingly did and seems more disappointing this year than should be, or what's your view? Well, so – I think to me, how I feel it with the team, and this we, the Devils are an extremely talented team. They're probably one of the fastest team in the leagues. They're skilled beyond belief. Blah blah blah. I think last year they were a team that was up and coming, but I think they they, you know, it's like a little bit of fool's gold. They 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 had all these teams didn't really expect the Devils to be the third have the third best record, you know, at the end of the year last year, and that surprised a lot of teams. And I think that, um, you know, going into this year, a lot of the teams are like, no, 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 we're not going to be surprised anymore how how you are and how skilled you are and speed you are. And they played the teams differently. I think the biggest problem with the Devils, for me, you know, goaltending is a, goal a part of it, but the team plays cute. You can't play cute in this, in this league anymore. Um, you, you know, I always, you know, we talk about the, 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 the Rangers, for example, the Flyers, how they play – they play strong. They play tough. You can still be skilled and play somewhat of a skilled game, but you also, I feel, have to play direct hockey. You have to dump it in once in a while. You have to play that kind of grinded out meat potatoes game to open up maybe that skill set. And the Devils, in a lot of times during the year, they just play that East-West game like they're playing in the power play, like they're playing in the, in the All-Star game, and it doesn't work all the time. You have to play direct hockey at times. And I think that's really, really, really hurt them. They play, I like to say, I say they play cute. They're a cute team and you can't play cute, you know? And then you got situations where, yes, they had a big win, you know, last night in Long Island for nothing. But before, the game before that, you're at home and you lose to the Senators who aren't are, are out of the playoffs completely. These are the games you have to win. And when you look at teams like the Rangers, because, like, they're, you know, they're our, probably our biggest, you know, right next to us across the river. They got a lot of skill, but they don't just play east-west. They play with direct, with a purpose, along with their skill and along with their speed. And you know they're one of the best teams in the league, and they're and they're they're consistent. And that's what you got to be. And the Devils just aren't. And um, teams kind of figured them out, and they got to figure it out going in for next year. Well, um, I don't think they're half as cute as when you were playing for them because you're so cute yourself. So, <laughs> so Chris, yeah, Chris, the Flyers, big win. Big big win Saturday. Yeah. Tough loss yesterday. Yeah. So, but they're you know they're on that edge. So, what do you see and uh, what could possibly <laughs> improve if if need be? And uh, what's your general outlook for them? Uh, first, just to let Marshy know, there there was nothing anything cute about any Devils team in the nineties or the early two thousands. <laughs> nothing. True. True. But they won. That <laughs> great goaltending. Uh, you know what? It, it's interesting what Marshy just said, and it, it's when I when you look at Philadelphia. Uh, you probably, and I'll say this because I think most people would, they probably have the least individual amount of skill that are in the playoffs of any team in the league right now. But they have a coach um, who demands a lot. Uh, a lot of people question his methods of how he does it, um, but it's worked. And the Flyers this year, uh, with the limited skill, the limited high end skill, uh, they've had to play a north south game. They can't play east west or they'd be the bottom in the league. So they have a coach that makes them play a hard nose, get it in, puck, attack the puck, swarm, uh, swarm the bodies in the zone and get repossession. And uh, it's worked. Now, again, like Marshy said, too, uh, you know, you can come on one year and have a great magical year. And it doesn't mean it's going to translate to anything the following year because teams get a book on you. They understand your processes and how you, you get to where you get. And that's why it's important to build a good foundation um, like the Rangers have. The Rangers of the three teams, I think we would all agree, are the most complete mm -hmm. of all three teams we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. skill, they have speed, and they have they play a north-south style with coupled with excellent goaltending. The other two teams, you, the Devils are too easy to play against, and the Flyers are, are still an unknown, but they're going to work their ass off and make life miserable for you. And uh, that's kind of the, I think, for the two teams, you agree, Marshy? That's where we're at with Absol these. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, 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 and stats don't lie, right? No. They show, no. They, they show it. They show yeah. it. 
All right, yeah. guys. Well, well, now we come to Mr. Greshner, who spent his entire career, 16 oh. years, and I I, I, has, has not left the Rangers. You watched previous years, Gresh? A lot of people talk this was the Ranger year and something happened. What's different this year, if anything? Well, I think I think we have to give the Devils some credit here for, for this Ranger team. Because last year, the Devils embarrassed them. And they, I think a lot of guys talking to them have restructured their thinking on what they're going to do this year. And it, Panarin's one. A lot of guys, Lafreniere, another guy. All these guys, they 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 they, I, I they got embarrassed last year and a lot those we losing the last four to five, and the Devils outplayed them. So there's no, it's not like okay we should have won the Rangers should have won, they played great in the first two games, played ga good in game six, and the Devils were high flying team, mm -hmm. and that's the way it is. And then when they play when the Rangers play the Flyers, it's always like, ugly. It's been ugly since '74 since I got here. So it's just, <laughs> that's just the way the games. So no, it's, but they they've kind of. I think they've, you know, they went to the uh, conference finals. Last year they got beat out in the first round. I think this year, I don't want to say the word they spoke, not supposed to say, but I think they have a top four teams to win a ring. And they, they have right now. They picked up those two guys that they, instead of picking up the, the big glamour guys, they picked up this kid uh, from, from uh, Columbus. Speed, good skill. He just needed bigger guys around him. Better, better players, and the, and Wen, Wenberg is unbelievable. I watch him like I, I watch the games and I, I kind of watch the game stupidly because I watch players that, as they play on the ice. One guy that I don't watch how the play goes, I watch to see how a player plays, and he he's a good player. Mm -hmm. and, and and listen, to me, I, I I wish them all the luck in the world. I I hope they win. Like I, but I I still get. I, I've been going there fifty years. I still get butterflies and stuff when I go to the garden. Yeah. Not, nothing would be better. It's, it's iconic. My favorite, too. my favorite building to play at. So I can yeah, say it's that. Very iconic. It's very so iconic, right? It's yeah. the best. Oh, no, it's it's, it's, it's best. unreal. It's just, it's just the most amazing place. And most amazing. I think what you're saying, like you're kind of saying too, though, Gresh, too, with regards to the, the acquisitions, a lot of times it's just complimentary. Just, you don't need that to be, you don't need to bring in a guy to be hopefully that guy. When you got a team that's already maybe doesn't need a whole lot, <laughs> You just yeah. need a couple of complimentary players to 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 yeah. to maybe fill that little missing hole that may be there, and that's, and that's what they why, have, right? Yeah, and that's why I think Drury did a great job by not not really giving anything away to get these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. last year you get Kane, right? And it's a big splash move, and everyone gets excited. And I've been on Flyers teams that had a move like that every year. It doesn't always work. Listen, you gotta have goaltending too. <laughs> I'm the only. I think I'm the only guy in the league that played on a team. That traded two first round draft picks for two coaches. Uh, one of them was a flyer. One of them was a flyer, right? Freddie, yeah. yeah. Freddie Shero, yeah. And Bergeron. <laughs> and think of that, though. Think of that. <laughs> oh, put away a, a pick, a first rounder for a coach. What oh was it? Uh, Mark Tenorti. Rangers drafted Mark Tenorti back in the 80s. And he ended up going to Minnesota, right? He, I don't yes. Know Minnesota. Yeah, he was in Minnesota. Too, but he got traded. He was in Washington, yeah. too, Marshy. That's yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, I get. I used to get to practice really early in the morning because you know I was living in the city and I you know practice at ten o'clock. I leave the city at seven. I didn't care, right? You know, and I get there and this kid's walking out. I go, "Where are you going?" He goes, "They traded me." You know, so I went in the office. There was uh, Phil Esposito, um, Wayne Cashman, Eddie Jockerman, Tommy Webster, who was a coach at that time. Yeah, remember who else was in there? And I, I can't believe I never got traded that day. I wow. go over to play Philly tomorrow night, and you're trading away a six foot five, two hundred and thirty pound guy. I mean, for for a five five foot eight guy, which he was a great guy. I mean, so, but we're going to play Philly. Like if you if all of all the people that know this, you guys want to <laughs> Philly, you beat everybody up in the early seventies, and they they were like, oh, right, come on, I go like, no, I, I said some words I can't say on here, but. All right, guys, listen, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot more people going to be able to meet and greet you and hear some of these stories. But this is the out question. It's short and to the point. And I'm going to start with Grant. You can't pick your own team and chances are it's not going to be your team, Grant. But if the Devils don't win the Stanley Cup, that's the way I'll point it. 
Who's your mm -hmm. most likely candidate to win the Stanley Cup as of right now as we speak? <sighs> I think if I was, and I'm not a betting man, I never have and never will be. I, I, I like, I like Colorado. I like, I like how they are out of the West. Um, they're they're on a, 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 a one. I think they've been undefeated in quite quite some time late of late. I like them. They have the experience. They've won. You can never count out the Rangers. That organization, you know, the East. They're they're going to be tough to beat. I don't want to say Boston because I just don't like Boston. <laughs> um, but if so I'm going to give you the team, I think I'm going to go with Colorado. Okay, Chris. Yeah, so I, just for me, guys, I mean, I think the Flyers are playing with house money. Uh, if they win the Stanley Cup, it'll be the greatest story in the history of the league. Um, a rebuild essentially coming in that wins the Cup. So, But who knows, right? There's a lot of teams. Uh, just kind of scouring through it. I, You know, I think there's some teams that have been set up for it. Uh, I think in the, the East, uh, Florida, Boston, and New York are the, the cream of the crop. But keep an eye on Tampa. You can't discount a guy like Kucherov the way he's played. Uh, he's been just incredible this year. So you never know with Tampa if they can turn the dial and make things happen. But I think I, I'm going to go in the East. I'm, I'm going to actually I'm, – I'm not doing this because you're here, Gresh. I think the Rangers are the deepest team and the most dangerous offensive flair. Um, but I'm going to move over to the West, and this may surprise you a little bit, but I'm going to look at a team that's kind of been there and hadn't gotten it done, but I think they're close and no one's talking about them, is Dallas, uh, your old team too, Marshy. Uh, mm -hmm. They've got awesome. some veterans. Yeah, they've got some veterans there. They've – um, they have a good team and, and they could be, again, you're going against Colorado's and Vegas and Edmonton yeah. really tough to come out, but that's my surprise pick would be Dallas coming out of, out of the, uh, actually I'm going to, I'll say they're going to win the cup against the Rangers. They're due. They're due. They are. Yeah. Yeah. They are. All right, Gresh. I know you feel it's the Rangers, but just in case something didn't happen, who would you go with? I don't care. I knew. I actually knew. I, I was going to predict what you were going to say. <laughs> uh, I'll be listen to me. I'll be on DraftKings making bets. But I want. I don't really care. You know, like it's. Um, there is some. There's a lot of good teams. Isn't well, there, well really? let me yeah. ask you. Let me ask you, whole Gresh. I'll I ask you. Let me, let, me ask, let me ask you this question. Gresh. Team would be. I would like to see Edmonton win only because mm -hmm. of McDavid. I like to see Colorado win because of. McKinnon being in there. Yes. Yeah. And then I, I would go the next one in line. I would really like to see Dallas win because they've had some good teams over the last years and haven't mm -hmm. haven't run it out. But yeah, they they're, they're, they are they could be a surprise out west. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And on this side here, who can surprise? I don't like Boston. I think they're overrated. Yeah, they're really. Uh, I think maybe. Um, I think maybe Toronto's. Four core four, whatever they call those guys, get up and play. Could yeah. be a difference. And I think Florida has a shot. But you're right about don't underestimate Cooper's team. Yeah, he's a good coach. But he's, you know Toronto. Toronto's got that Toronto curse. This is I'm from Toronto. <laughs> it just it kills them. You know that curse fans. All right, you know listen, up. listen up now. Here we go. You <laughs> talked about a curse. Gresh, Gresh. Hang on. You guys didn't mention one team, and I am a mocked man still in that town. In fact, I had my life threatened because I knocked that team for years when I visited there. Vancouver. This year, they seem to be like playing like I've never seen them play before. They almost beat the Rangers one year, and none of you mentioned them at all. What do you think of the Vancouver Canucks? I, I wouldn't pick Vancouver. They had a chance to draft me, and I played in Vancouver for junior hockey and didn't draft me. He's still okay. angry about it. Vancouver will never get picked yeah. by me. <laughs> yeah, no, they're a good team. They got Quinn Hughes is a, is a, is a star. Um, yeah. They're a solid team, but there's so many, especially out west too. There's a lot of teams. I mean, yeah. it's hard. You, you know the one the one team I'll tell you this so and I uh, and I have to go. I said, but I uh, looking at the East, and I think you guys would agree with it. If I had to pick one of those eight teams that I would want to play, it would be Toronto for me. Yep. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would be like if I said, oh, that the easiest one. Absolutely, give me the Leafs. Austin, you can't trust. You can't trust them. You just no. can't. No, you just right. can't. And I, listen, I, I grew up a Leaf fan. I'm from Toronto. You just can't <laughs> trust them. Yeah. Well, you know all the curses there. Pete Stemkowski got traded after the '67 uh, Stanley Cup. He got traded. He got traded to I think Detroit, and I came to New York. That was it. <laughs> goes, every time I see Pete, he lives in Long Island. He goes, 
See, the curse is still there. There, so it's there. Come back in. All right, men, listen, I'm going to end it here. I look forward to seeing you all on April 6th at the Meadowlands. Uh, you'll be signing and greeting fans, and then uh, we'll all get together and have a little bite to eat. And thank you very much for your time. And I'm glad none of you picked the Canucks because I can't afford them to win because I abuse so many people <laughs> in Vancouver, and I hope to be dead before they finally win one. So thank you. All. Peter, I've never seen you look so good. <laughs> you know, hey, by the way, uh, Gresh, you know this, right? It's Flyers Rangers tomorrow night, right, bud? Yeah. At the garden. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. nice. Tomorrow night, Flyer. Yeah. You can't get a ticket here. Wait, wait, no. is, it, is, it, is it in New York? Oh, good. That's oh, in good. the garden. Yeah. You can't get, you can't get a ticket. Can't. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.